Calvin Ridley has been suspended for the 2022 NFL season for gambling on NFL games. Uh, the statement here says, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell today suspended Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons indefinitely through at least the conclusion of the 2022 season for betting on NFL games in the 2021 season. The activity took place during a five-day period in late November 2021 while Ridley was not with the team and was away from the club's facility on the non-football illness list. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we could go with this. Uh, I'm I'm curious your thoughts. His it, So, he was away from the team due to, uh, I guess, broad terms, Mid- mental Mid- illness, right? Yeah, mental, mental health, like, break is what he basically was right. on. And and while he was away, uh, it says late November, so sometime around Thanksgiving, he put some wagers down on NFL games. And it doesn't say if he bet on his team or against his team or whatever. Who knows? But uh, but it was found out that he did, in fact, gamble on NFL games, and now he is being suspended. I'm curious your thoughts on this. There are a lot of a lot of guys around these teams, a lot of guys that are friends with guys that are on the teams, etc., that I'm sure make bets on the regular and try and do it probably undercover, you know, whatever. Uh, one, how do you think they found out about this? And then two, you know, do you think this is just, you know, it, will we will we see him in the future? Like, what, what do you think is going on here? All right, so I've got no idea how they found out, but I am glad that the NFL has, rules like this in place to find out about these things. Oh, yeah, because um, the, the wise the, guys, uh, you know, there there are people around the country that think that now that, and, and this is the older generation, they believe that with, with gambling being so prevalent that all of the games are now rigged, right? They think that yeah. everything's rigged. And you get something like this, you know it's, it's probably not worth it to lose a year of salary from the NFL, right? That's that's right. I hope the juice was worth the squeeze. I hope that mental health week, weekend was was good because it's about to cost you millions and millions of dollars. And if you weren't betting on like thrown games or games you had inside information in, yeah, there's basically a fifty fifty chance you won those bets or lost them. Yeah. So let's let's really hope that they're worth it. Uh, I <clears throat> this is just one of those things that I like sports gambling. I like sports gambling being. Legal. I think it should be legal and allowed. I do not believe that those who participate in the game should be able to bet on them. That's just the way I feel. And I don't think you can argue the other side of this. So um, there are going to be people that say, well, then how, how could they be a sponsor for the product but not, uh, but not be able to participate in it? I think that's, that's normal. Like that's, like being a spokesman for something and taking money for something for a sponsorship, but then saying you you can't use this product is, is perfectly fine with me, um, you know, because of the conflict of interest. That's it. That's the reason you are the you know the spokesman, but can't do it. You can do it whenever you're not a part of the game anymore. If you would like to quit playing football, then then you could then you could participate in it. Um, so, so I don't, I don't have any any problems with the quote unquote hypocrisy of that. I, this is just wrong. I find this strange. I will tell you this: I think a lot of these players use this mental health break that they need. Um, they're stepping away from it. So many of them use this, and then they're just they're literally just going to you know Vegas or you know some island or whatever, and 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 just partying their ass off for a week. Like, come on, man, no. There are people that are really struggling with legitimate issues in the league and around the world um, at their own stuff. And, and doing things like this, I think, make, make those claims just seem insignificant and yeah. not, not real. Like saying, oh, well, him needing a break, him needing a week off is a big deal. Oh, really? He needs a week off from his job that he does 17 weeks a year? He well, needs a week off from that. It, it wasn't just one week. Remember, he was he was out for, I mean, from the midway point of the season on, right, or maybe even earlier. Like he he was gone for a long Did time. Did he miss all of that for for that time, or thought some of that was no? He, was he actually got hurt. No, he like he left the team uh, for mental mental health. So yeah, it it was. So let me ask you this: Do you think that this 
team because when you leave for mental health, that's seen as an injury. You're still compensated. You're still paid. Yeah. If you're the Falcons, do you think now that you have this information come out, do you think you can go after him for that back pay for the salary that you paid him for those mental health days? Because um, he was doing something. He was not necessarily mental healthy. He was doing something that violated his contract and violated team rules. Yeah, you could, you could probably go after that, most certainly. Uh, it, so we've got a buddy of ours that is a Falcons fan that actually texted me about this and was like, Hey, at this point, do the Falcons just cut him and, and you know, cut your losses when you can? And I said, I don't know why well, you would, because now you don't have to pay him. Up, like, well, yeah, there was a lot of reports that up to today that everyone assumed he was on the trading block anyway. Yeah. Um, but after today, there's a reason he didn't get traded. Like, I'm sure a lot of people thought he was going to be gone and was curious why they weren't moving him. Yeah, and, um, and props and to the Falcons now, now for, we know. Yeah, for yeah. being real about that and understanding exactly what was going on. Which, by the way, just since we've been talking, Calvin Ridley tweeted out, I bet $1,500 total, I don't have a gambling problem. And Albert Breer tweeted and said, uh, so how did Calvin Ridley get busted? He was in Florida and used the only gambling app legal in the state. The app notified a compliance company the NFL has hired called Genius for this kind of thing. Uh, the fact that he was out of state was a factor in Ridley's activity being flagged. Well, here's the deal. This is, this is him being an idiot. Like I said, I hope it was worth it. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with gambling on sports and you doing it while you're away, whatever, that's fine. It, it, it's just stupid, though. It's just dumb. And you're going to now pay the price for it. Yeah. You're going to lose a year of your career, and, and this is a game in which guys average careers three, three and a half years. Now, I think Calvin will play longer than three and a half years, but but I wonder if he's released after this. Um, you know, somebody will pick him up because he's a talent, but he's going to go a year without playing, and he's going to have this stigma on him. What's that contract looking like? Because he hadn't hit that second contract yet. Yeah, no, that's that's the biggest thing. He's still uh, playing he, on the rookie deal. He he tweeted uh, a little more, by the way. Uh, so before that, he tweeted two different times, and then he tweeted that last one. The first one he tweeted said. Just going to be more healthy when I uh, get back. And then the second one was, I couldn't even watch football at that point. And then the third one said, I bet $1,500 total. I don't have a gambling problem. And... Well, I, I don't, I don't, it's not about do you have a problem or not. Like some people think, oh, well, this is a sickness. Well, you know, whatever. Uh, that, you know, that's a, that's a, I'm not claiming that. I'm just claiming stupidity. Like I'm just claiming bad. You, this is just you're a person that makes bad decisions. That yeah. would be the red flag that I would have. Roger Sherman you're tweeted not by the way. of making a good good decision. Exactly. Ro Roger Sherman tweeted uh, from the Ringer. He said Calvin Ridley bet fifteen hundred dollars and lost ten million. Those are the worst odds in gambling history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. it's true. I, I just read. I'll, I'll give I'll give a free plug to a guy that I really really enjoy. He's a stand up comedian. You know, I love comedy. His name's Brant Tobler. I just read his book, Free Roll, and it's about his life and when he before he became a comedian, kind of how he became a comedian. That's all at the very end. Um, but he he was a sports book runner for pros and for a long time. And he talked about the whole book is called Free Roll, and he basically explains what a free roll is pretty early on. And 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 it's he, there are two types of free rolls. There's one where you know you, you can bet a hundred dollars of not your money. That that's something you know. One team will win or one team will lose, and if you lose, you lose nothing. If it wins, you get the hundred bucks. So you have everything to win and nothing to lose. But then there are some free rolls, and he would use this as a situation where all outcomes are losers. And in this situation, you you bet fifteen hundred dollars, and and if you win, you win fifteen hundred dollars, but lose ten million. And if you lose, you lose fifteen hundred dollars. And lose ten million, like they're they're all bad outcomes. Yeah. Um, so it's a great book on Audible. It was really funny to listen to. I found it enjoyable. I think you'll like it. Go get Brent's uh, book, and if you like it, tweet it out, tag me, and tell Brent you liked it, and uh, that I told you about it because maybe he'll he'll uh, hook a hook a young guy up who's trying to uh, learn some stand up comedy himself. What was uh What was the guy's name again? Brent Tobler. Let's see. All right. 
All right, we can uh, we can certainly do that. I might tweet that out myself. It's the only it's the only book on Audible called Free Roll. All right, that sounds good to me. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.